we'll just start sort of with uh, some personal introductions and then as is the way of these kinds of things we'll talk about the past and the present before we get to talking about the future of games. Uh, we're going to focus mostly on tabletop role playing as our sample uh, with a few f side forays um, and we'll tantalize you with the conclusion only at the very end of what the future holds. So I'm Doug Kaufman. I am the um, creative director at Digit Software doing Star Trek Fleet Command. So it's not role-playing related. It's an uh, online mobile game, but it does relate in some ways to uh, what we're going to talk about in terms of in-person versus online gaming. And I'm Lawrence Schick, and uh, I've been designing role-playing games for approximately as long as there have been role-playing games. Uh, and I am currently... <coughs> Uh, a uh, lead narrative designer at uh, Larian Studios in Dublin, uh, working on uh, Baldur's Gate 3, a uh, Dungeons & Dragons video game, which will be coming out this summer. <laughs> All right, so to start off with, uh, I think, a little bit about the past. I think Lawrence and I probably started playing Dungeons & Dragons when it came out. I was in high school. You probably were in college, weren't you? I was. Yeah, okay. Um, got the very first edition. <laughs> Got the very first edition, had that very first experience, nothing like it, never be to be repeated uh, in the history of the 40 years since. Uh, but, or maybe it was more than 40 years. <clears throat> uh, but the idea is that that has became uh, more and more popular. Uh, we played it, and it always, almost always was in person, of course. Uh, so the past is just, for me at least, a exposure to games working first in board and role-playing games to design them, to play them in person. Uh, wouldn't have even really considered anything other than hopping in the car, driving to a friend's house who was running the game, and bringing snacks. Um, and then working through uh, computer games, console games, uh, uh, stand-up, arcade games, and then this thing, Facebook and mobile, started happening sometime in, in our lives. In fact, Lawrence got me a job at AOL in the gaming channel uh, when it first started up. So most of my, my set social experience was in person. That's the past. Then came COVID. And that, I think, threw a monkey wrench into works that were already starting. There was online gaming. There was YouTube. There was Critical Role. People were interested, the younger generation was probably starting to do that remote. But the idea hadn't yet occurred to me to actually run something remote. The need hadn't yet occurred to me. When COVID came and we all got scattered, some very interesting things happened um, to the personal experience, to the business experience, and to the world. Uh, and I think in some ways to talk about role playing and role playing games and in person or online, what does the future hold, is a metaphor for business and a metaphor for the world, right? So at that time, we had to play anything we wanted to play remotely. Now, you'll notice we don't have like a, a PowerPoint or anything. I don't like PowerPoints, but I'm also never trusting the technology. <laughs> and so you get this thing all set up to go, and then it doesn't work, right? Half the time, you know that. So. That was, I think, a big deal, was the technology be just before COVID was supporting, but not very supportive of trying to do, especially board games and role-playing games remotely. Um, like the way that war causes military technology to advance by leaps and bounds, the pandemic caused communication technology to advance, well, at least by leaps, let's say. And at the same time, in, in my business, for example, people started to move away from the hub. You didn't have to go into the office. In fact, you couldn't go into the office every day. So instead, you went to live in London. My, my design director is in London. You went to live in Belfast. Our director of product is in Belfast. Cork, our executive producer is in Cork. There's still a few people in Dublin. Then as things began to progress in terms of communicating via Zoom and Discord and Google Meets, people started playing online because they couldn't do anything else. As the pandemic was ending, not only did our business change because there was, I'm sorry to say, a mobile game boom during the pandemic uh, because that was what there was to do, um, the question arose to the corporation as it has arisen to the world, what is the future? 
are we going to gather everybody back up? Are we going to make the guy who moved to London and to Cork and to Belfast move back close? Are we going to encourage people even to come into the Dublin hub? Because what if they get COVID and it's our responsibility? Um, last year, that was a big question. This year, we're so established in the diversified group. We, we onboarded a studio in Barcelona and we all work together even though it's remote. So when we play, we kind of have to play remote. But there's the old guard, and I, by that I don't mean old like me, I mean the people who in the business were entrenched in the idea of creativity being better when you're all together with a whiteboard, which it's not, um, that we needed to get people back. So there's still that possibility, and we know that corporations all over the world are saying, hey, time to return to work. Let's come back, four days a week minimum. Um, but my experience has been, and I'm gonna turn it over to Lawrence in a second, because his experience is actually very different from mine, um, that we are remaining remote. And so there's a hint about what I think the future is gonna be like, but there's this rebel underground of people who want us to return to in person. And so what's gonna happen? I don't know, but that was my experience. Okay. so. Um, uh, I'll, I'll talk about some different uh, aspects of this. Um, the, and I'm going to go a bit more into this at uh, uh, more of the history of things at uh, at four thirty. If anybody's still around that after uh, this afternoon, um, but um, you know, RPG rules are tools. They're uh, uh, systems and uh, uh, data to enable you to tell stories with other people collectively. Um, because not everybody is a, a professional storyteller. In fact, hardly anybody is. Um, but uh, with, the, with the help of these tools, um, you are able to imagine yourself into a, uh, a situation that you previously had only seen uh, in different media, you know, uh, books, movies, comic books. Uh, now you can participate in that story and make it happen and make your choices meaningful and make them collectively with other people. Um, so for most of uh, the last uh, 40 years, um, uh, role-playing games were still, uh, there's very much a dichotomy between uh, tabletop games where, where people gathered together and uh, exchanged their stories uh, you know, together, uh, and then uh, computer and video gaming, which initially uh, the tools there were very crude and they did not facilitate multiplayer gathering. Even when they did, uh, you know, there was stuff like multi-user dungeons, MUDs, you know, just the name of it tells you this is not a mass market uh, <laughs> kind of an endeavor, right? Uh, so uh, it was, it's only, only over time um, that we have been able to get uh, uh, digital help, um, uh, digital tools uh, to help we, you tell stories in groups uh, with, uh, uh, with computer help, computer aid. And also we had to have, you know, we had to have the online experience developed uh, and uh, uh, computers had to uh, become capable enough uh, to, uh, to moderate interactions um, between uh, other players and to assist them either to uh, replicate the around the table, uh, tabletop experience uh, with things like uh, uh, Roll20 and uh, uh, Beyond D&D, D&D uh, &D Beyond. Um, uh, or, you know, to, to play together in uh, either multiplayer video games or in like MMO RPGs uh, 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 such as World of Warcraft or Elder Scrolls Online, which I worked on for some time. Uh, and uh, uh, in those games, um, uh, the, uh, there's, there's still a, a very limited quantity of storytelling that the computer does. Uh, and so you know, you're, you're put into very simple situations with your other friends. Uh, and so the storytelling still happens based upon your, your collective choices. But the interactions that, that come out of them are, are uh, uh, with, the, with the environment, with the non-player characters, are shallow. Um, and so we're only just now uh, starting to get to a point where we can transcend that. Uh, and. Uh, uh, so we'll, uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about that uh, uh, toward the end. Um, but uh, uh, 
So uh, in, in, uh, in the middle, um, the, uh, the tabletop experience, as, uh, as, as Doug mentioned, uh, really exploded during the pandemic. Uh, the uh, uh, fifth edition of Dungeons and Dragons had been gaining popularity uh, already um, and uh, spinning off uh, other games, uh, getting people interested in, uh, in the hobby uh, so that they found uh, uh, other things that, uh, you know, where Dungeons and Dragons tells a certain kind of story with a certain genre. And if you're interested in other things, then you have to find uh, other, other uh, sets of rules, other tools to help you. Um, so uh, uh, those really took off during the pandemic um, because people were at home and they didn't have anything to do. Uh, and uh, th that's when the uh, 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 tabletop um, uh, aids, uh, the online aids, really, really became more sophisticated, more available. Uh, more common, um, and uh, the uh, uh, the question is where where those are going to go. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, wh where are our video games going to go? So I'm going to turn this back over to Doug to talk a bit more about uh, the tabletop stuff. All right. So <clears throat> we've set the stage here that we are all used to the in-person experience, but we got used to the distributed experience, and. <clears throat> The big question is, how far has the bus rolled toward the precipice? It's, it's one of those rocking things in a movie, right? So will the world try to claw its way back to more and more in-person, uh, or will it go over the precipice? And in-person gaming will become similar to model railroading. You know, there's still a few diehards out there doing it, but it's not as big a thing as it was 30, 40 years ago. So my take from where I sit, uh, as, as you may have guessed from what I was saying before, people come to these games because they're mobile, right? That's the whole point. And <clears throat> you don't have to have a lot of stuff and you don't have to know a lot of things to be able to just join into one. And people often come to the game, we get this all the time when we do surveys and things, for the game itself the interesting IP, the fact that they like role-playing, whatever it may be, but they always say that the reason they stay, the big thing, the hook, is the social, the friends that they have made. So that's the key like, driver, and that works better distributed than it does in person. Right now, with distributed play, there are sites that will say, hey, I'm a DM, who wants to play? And there are people who say, I need a game, who's DMing? Uh, whereas I'm stuck here in my local group, especially since that group has become distributed by the pandemic, I cannot play with the guy in Belfast. I cannot play with the guy in Cork. I have to do that distributed with them, except when they come in on the train for the occasional meetings. Now, there are different circumstances, but from my end, the technology got the kick it needed so that it still needs more. It's, it's one of those things where I wish it was better. Uh, but that got the kick it needed from the pandemic to become stable enough, although not stable enough, to become uh, sufficiently able to kind of aid me with, with maps and figures and things, although not sufficiently enough. Uh, and the time zone differentials, we work it out. So everything comes together to me to say that the future is more distributed. I don't think the world is going to be able to claw itself back. But they really want to. And there are places that have, which makes me wonder about my own conclusion. Because while there will still be mobile gaming, that's not going anywhere anytime soon. And I think the, the future of AR and VR is kind of like, don't worry about it. It's not really the future of gaming. The future of gaming is, for us, trying to figure out how to bring people together from all over the world. It's not enough now to just advertise and hope that people will come find your game and join it. You need the people in the game to distribute themselves out, and you need the game itself to not just be an experience on your mobile phone, you need it to be proselytized and available on all kinds of different platforms. And maybe the experience is different. It's not just the Mac version and the PC version or whatever, but you can play on the website, but you're not playing the whole game. You can play on the mobile. That's a different part of the game. You can do stuff with your friends offline through Discord, and that's supported by the company in a different kind of game. So I think it's just going to distribute further and further, and when we want to play with our friend in Florida, we don't have a choice, and 
The one thing I mourn is my beautiful miniatures collection. I'm like, I can't use those anymore. I have so many miniatures to do cool monsters with and everything. But even now, we can make figures in the online support technologies, and we've made our own characters. And it'll start to get easier for someone to manipulate the, the software and have it up on a screen. And we're all sharing this wherever we are. It's also a little harder to go out afterward to the pub, so there's that. To, to consider, but I'm going to kind of go out on a limb and say that the ubiquity of social gaming and the fact that we got used to being distributed is going to take hold more and more as the technology improves and that that's really the future is that you, you, you should learn how to use these online things. I need to learn how to use these online things to run my games distributed. I'm rarely, except with my family, going to run a game in person anymore. So I'll go back to you. Uh, okay, so uh, <clears throat> I'm over on the other side. Um, when, I, uh, when I came over here to work on, you know, it, it, it had to move across the, uh, uh, the Atlantic and uh, I had way too much stuff in my basement. I gave away all my miniatures, <laughs> uh, so so I don't have those. Uh, I don't have the burden of of trying to figure out if I'm how I'm ever going to run those again. Um, what what I've been working in uh, for uh, for some time uh, is in uh, multiplayer video games, um, and and I I am very passionate about you know loving tabletop gaming and what it brings to the the collective you know fun of bouncing off each other and riffing on, 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 on different uh, ideas and, uh, uh, and just the hilarity of what happens uh, when, when people play together and uh, uh, because the, unex the results are unexpected. So unexpected results are not the kind of thing computers handle very well. <laughs> uh, they want everything to be, uh, to be really clear and unambiguous. Uh, so um, there have be there's been uh, different strains of, of role-playing video games uh, uh, going on. Um, the, uh, the real multiplayer ones, uh, the uh, MMORPGs and the uh, multiplayer games that, uh, uh, you know, that, where you can play with uh, four, six, eight other players um, have been uh, working out all of the uh, uh, different technical ways to handle the unexpected choices that players make in <coughs> groups. Right? Um, but because computers don't handle ambiguity very well, um, those, the, 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 the depth of reaction that you can get in most of those games is, as I mentioned before, shallow. Right? Um, there's, uh, uh, the, the quests are pretty simple. Um, there aren't a lot of uh, uh, variability to, uh, uh, to what you can do with them. The, the different choices that, uh, that players can make are, are quite limited. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, then you've got uh, really directed single player games, even if they happen to have a multiplayer component. But you know, things along the lines of the Witcher series, the God of War series, things where it's very cinematic um, uh, and you're making some choices, but fundamentally you're finding a story that somebody else wrote. So um, you are, uh, they partake of the role-playing experience, um, but they're not handing off a lot of the choices to you um, because, uh, uh, because if they do, uh, because they have, they have invested great quantities of assets and resources uh, in certain scenes that they're gonna show you. Um, and you know, by golly, they're gonna direct you to those scenes because they've only got 26 of them uh, and uh, and so uh, you know you're, you've got to you've got to see them all or at least most of them. So it's um, a railroad. Yes. So so it's it's a very directed experience. So um, the holy grail then for a, uh, a narrative designer like me is to somehow merge these two paths and get get the uh, get the the golden <coughs> response, which is um, uh, depth of reactivity with broad player choice at the same time. Uh, and so that's what, that's what the, you know, the, the, it's, people are coming at it from two different directions. Big MMOs are, are, are uh, coming at it by gradually um, uh, uh, 
honing their, their, their ways of uh, uh, making quests uh, more variable and giving more reactivity and uh, uh, managing more choice, uh, enabling more choices that they hand off to players. Um, then there are, uh, like the, the game that we're building, Baldur's Gate 3, uh, it, it is based on the uh, D&D 5th edition rule set. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's already got the heritage of the tabletop gaming experience uh, in, in that regard. Um, but the, the big challenge then is uh, to, uh, 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 to find the, the, the depths uh, of, of, of play um, that you can kind of get with, with tabletop. Uh, and just having a D&D rule set doesn't do it because there's a bunch of games out there that do that, right? And they're mostly pretty shallow. So um, uh, what we're trying to do, uh, and we're not the only people trying to do it, but uh, uh, is, is to provide you with a rich interaction with the world and the non-player characters uh, so that uh, the non-player characters um, will be uh, nearly as real to you as your fellow player characters, and in fact, um, we let you inhabit some of the some of the really deeper non-player characters and play their roles. Um, and uh, because we have we build into the experience uh, of the world that you're playing in uh, a, a deep web of reactivity um, with the uh, with the non-player characters and with the choices that you have made. Uh, so that you get unexpectedly uh, variable responses uh, to a situation, depending upon what class or species or a background you've chosen, and most importantly, what, ex what choices you have made earlier in the game. Um, so that means that the story has to become uh, very broad. Uh, and it, it, it has to, it can't have just these 26 scenes that you got to hit. Um, so there has to be a way whereby uh, there are um, key moments that get a real heavy cinematic treatment, but there has to be a almost dynamically generated cinematic treatment to all the player interactions as they occur. So that it feels like you're talking with another player, because in a moment later, you're going to be talking with another player. <laughs> Uh, and it, 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 you don't want it to be jarringly different, right? So, um, uh, so that's, uh, that's the direction we're going in. Um, and uh, I just got the five minutes ah, sign. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to ask. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to talk more about uh, uh, the history of, uh, uh, of the tool sets and where we're going to go with this deep reactivity stuff at 4.30. Um, but we got five minutes. So we're going to give it to you for questions. Well, let me just let me just wake, make a conclusion here from what what we've kind of heard, and and then we can see if you agree. Um, it seems to me that what we've said is that up until very recently, it was clearly a human DM to just bring it to that little focus. There's lots to other types of games and so forth, but it is a human game master who makes the experience rich. Up until recently. The experience on, on AI role-playing was shallow. They're approaching it from one direction. The others are approaching it from another direction. Procedural generation, user generation, AIs are getting, like last week our company started talking about chat GP and is it going to be the wave of the future and how can we use it now and what will it be sooner? Um, yeah, see, okay, so we do disagree, <laughs> but, but we have layers, we have procedural generation, we have user generation, we have that when it's ready, and we have the technology that still isn't quite there, uh, but it's getting better and better for connectivity and getting everybody wired up, even. Some people can't play remote because they're not on the internet. Um, so up until recently, it was clearly in-person gaming that was the future of gaming, and now I'm not so sure. I think that... We are headed more and more toward rich, uh, variable experiences online so that the, the logistics of travel and being places together, the difficulties they present just go away. And yes, we'll still occasionally do it, like there's guys out there who are running railroads, 
Uh, but generally speaking, I'm saying that it seems from both angles, from the MMORPGs that are being created to be more and more sophisticated, um, and maybe even using AIs just to generate art for your good cinematic scenes. Give me that much at least. Um, I said dynamically generated. <laughs> exactly. Um, and the ability for me, even as a human GM, to connect with my players wherever they are in the world will be the future. And that's, I have to get rid of my miniatures too, basically. So now, any, thank you. In however much time we have until Vincent says, shut the heck up, um, what did that make you think of? Questions or even comments? Are you sure you picked a hard enough problem? <laughs> <laughs> it picked us a long time ago, I think. Yep. Uh, uh, yes, uh, it's, uh, it, it picked us. Um, this is uh, uh, something that, uh, I mean, the exciting thing about role playing uh, is that it's a brand new art form. Uh, we just started making it up 50 years ago, and we're still making it up every day. <laughs> and that's really thrilling, you know? Um, there's, and why? Nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I always feel that the rules of a game are there just to keep people from feeling picked on. That's, the whole idea is the same situation generates the same outcome or the outcome that this number tells us. Uh, and I don't get to play favorites with my friends. But other than that, it really is teaching people to storytell. And, you know, that's... Many industries have been around for, you know, a few decades, but they still so much to find out. Why not be a part of it, right? Like, it's really fun and, and thrilling. Um, we're just riding the wave. I mean, we're on a surfboard. We're not trying to tell you where we're going to end up. We, we hope to end up on the beach, but <laughs> you know, we, don't, we don't know. We could wipe out along the way. But surfing is fun, so yeah, it's it's difficult, but that's part of the, the thrill, right? Yeah. How much of a threat do you think AI is to social gaming going forward? Look at a thing, something like ChatGPT. Could you get a multiplayer experience with a single player, not knowing they're playing with? AI? Uh, 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 it machine learning will enable the. Uh, the process, the, the, the game that you're playing to learn how you play. Uh, and so it will be able to then uh, predict some of your, your, your choices um, and it will then be able to uh, put uh, uh, NPCs or choices in your way that it thinks uh, are going to match up with what you're expecting because based upon what you've been doing previously. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of different things to work out there. Um, but it's going to be, uh, it's, it's not going to be like there's a big brain figuring this out or there's, there's uh, something that is sweeping the internet for answers to your questions. You know, it's, it's going to be done uh, with small systems integrated synergistically uh, and, and uh, some of it's going to be machine learning uh, and some of it's going to be uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, the, the kind of AI that they've been talking about recently that, uh, that can generate um, uh, graphics or, or sound or audio or anything like that, you know, kind of on the fly. Uh, so it'll be a big mix. I think it's always hard to predict that particular kind of advances in technology. I remember reading in Omni Magazine, the science magazine of the 80s, 90s maybe it was, early 2000s, that we would never have more than 30,000 polygons on the screen at one time. It was not physically possible, and you know, it's just so ridiculous. I think I was working on a game at the time that had 60,000 kind of thing. Um, so people say you can't break the sound barrier, you can't fly, you know, there's always that, like these are the limits of human whatever. Um, so yes, of course, someday we might be able to have the distributed experience with not even a real human being, and it might be as rich as the human experience, but it's hard to imagine, especially since our brains are so wired for just like seeing somebody on the screen and yes, they can generate a fake and everything, but, but you want to someday like meet that person and if it, you know they can't be real, it's just really creepy. So it feels like, no, it feels like what you could do is go to the big brain and say, run me a cool scenario 
and it could describe things really cool, and it could make interesting choices available to me, and it can generate beautiful graphics of dragons and things. But I'd like to think, at least, that in our lifetime, in, in your lifetimes, because yours are so much longer than ours, um, <laughs> that even that, that will not come to pass. I don't think we'll get there, but we will hopefully get to a place where we can, it can give you a really good experience, knowing that that's what it is. Okay, I think they're shoving us out. Yeah, sorry, okay. All right, well, thank you very much. Hope it was useful.